One of the easiest ways to spread propaganda is for people in the media to put a problem very simply, maybe with a metaphor, and viewers who don't think really critically about what they hear start to repeat it. Metaphors and other simple explanations spread much more easily than more complicated ones. Recently, they've dusted off the bad apples metaphor. Everyone knows the bad apples metaphor, right? Or do they? Before we get into what had to be said, let's thank our sponsor, Skateboarding Shark VPN. If you're a shark who likes surfing or skateboarding, this is the VPN for you. About 20 years ago, capitalism experienced one of its regular crashes. Scandals emerged from a bunch of big corporations. We watched the collapse of Arthur Anderson, WorldCom, and most infamously, Enron. From the documentary, The Corporation. These are not just a bunch of bad apples. This is just a few bad apples. It's not just a few bad apples. We've got to get rid of the bad apples. You can start with Tyco. Bad apples. We know all about WorldCom. Bad apples. Xerox Corporation. Bad apples. Arthur Anderson. Bad apples. Enron, obviously. Bad apples. Kmart Corporation. The fruit cart is getting uh, a little more full. I don't think it's just a few apples, unfortunately. I think this is the worst crisis of confidence in uh, business. Nowadays, with all the talk about police, and suspiciously not enough about corporations, we're hearing the bad apples line over again. But when the media talking heads and the people who semi-consciously absorb all their messages say it's only a few bad apples, they contradict themselves. They've forgotten the full expression and the lesson it aims to teach. It's not a few bad apples make the others taste bad, but we should still support them unconditionally. It's one bad apple spoils the bunch. Now we've remembered that, let's try applying this metaphor to the police. And if it doesn't apply, see if we can find a more suitable one. If the police were a case of apples, a bad apple or an individual could ruin the rest of them. You know, just like in this picture. But the problem with the police is not that it's been infected or corrupted. It's not the apples or individual officers that spoil or corrupt the batch, but the barrel itself. The barrel is made of what we call the state. We're taught to consider the state self-evidently good and necessary in representing the people. So naturally, on a channel all about countering propaganda, I've made a video about why it isn't, which you can find up here. You might also want to check out all of my other videos. But the long and the short of it is, the police exist to impose the will of the powerful, which means protecting rich people's property, throwing people into cages for not following orders, and at times, killing them. That power is what corrupts people. Knowing you can bully people or end a life and face few to no consequences. So it's irrelevant how good a given apple is in this barrel, because it's the barrel, the system itself, that's the problem. Saying the police are corrupted by bad apples is to imply there was a time when implementing the law and protecting the rich from the poor were good things. Or that they didn't use to do those things, but now they do. Maybe because they once had this bad police chief who changed what they did from, you know, purely selfless protecting and helping of everyone to serving the capitalist class at everyone else's expense. No, they've always been like that. We know that from history. Without police or the equivalent enforcers, there would have been no slavery, no apartheid, no holocaust, etc., etc. 
All the worst atrocities in history are carried out not by the Hitlers and Stalins, but by the police and soldiers who obey them. But, but they're just following orders. Exactly. You would think this simplistic fruit metaphor would be undermined by the countless cases we see in the headlines of police attacking and even killing with the least provocation. And we're only hearing about most of these cases from regular people who recorded the incidents. So you can imagine how much worse the abuse is in police stations and prisons where they aren't being filmed. But since the people can resort to their simplistic metaphor, they don't have to see things as a pattern. They can just keep saying, just a few bad apples, to justify the continuation of a system of violence. Other media metaphors don't work really well either. Sometimes people will say the problem is the well has been poisoned. But that implies there was a time it was pure and clean. The state has always been about violence and forced labor. That's not poisoning the well. That's more like putting a wall around the well and saying you can only drink from it if you work from us and follow all our orders without question. Would a better met metaphor for the police be sheepdogs? They do whatever their masters tell them to without thinking, including leading any number of living creatures to the slaughter. With this metaphor, it's no longer a question of good or bad police, but of the master's orders. If the master says, corral the sheep and make them go over there, that's what they do. If the master says, make them all come here so we can kill them, that's what the dog does. As they love their jobs bullying people and telling them what to do, U.S. police have already embraced this metaphor, not really surprisingly. Thinking it makes them look tough and necessary, as if the sheepdog's real role was to protect against wolves, rather than tell the sheep what to do. It shows how self-important they are because they embrace the propaganda about wolves, and how little regard they have for civilians, because we're just sheep. The weakness of this metaphor is sheepdogs don't usually beat up, steal from, kidnap, or kill the sheep. And considering how many cops are in right-wing vigilante groups like the KKK and neo-Nazis, the dogs and wolves are often the same animal. If you didn't know about that, by the way, there's a link in the description. Another metaphor the police use for themselves is that of a thin blue line. The idea is they protect society and the people from what could happen if there were no police. They say reducing the police's funding would open the floodgates to evil or whatever they want you to be afraid of. However, it would be more accurate to say the thin blue line protects the relatively wealthy people in society. Poor communities are full of police looking to arrest someone for something. Police don't make communities safer. They put everyone on edge. They terrorize communities. Removing people from the community through arrest and murder does not make those communities safer. Safety has never been the purpose of the police. They don't prevent violence, they cause it. The thin blue line is about protecting property. If we used it that way, it would be a reasonably accurate metaphor. You've got the rich and their property on one side of the line, the working class and the poor on the other, and the police in the middle facing the poor. Then there are the metaphors the rest of us use for the police. The filth, scum, pig, these are some of the terrible things the police is called. Terrible. But I don't know how accurate they are either. Pigs are cute, sensitive, and intelligent little creatures. So it couldn't be that. I've heard police called big babies or infants that use extreme violence but cry when justice is served. I've heard them called state-sanctioned pirates since they live off our salaries and try to take more from us whenever they can. 
I've heard them likened to gangs, but that one's so accurate I don't actually consider it a metaphor. The police are simply the biggest street gang, the one that considers the entire city its turf. And if you can find any differences between the police and a gang, it's probably ideology talking to you. Something in your brain might say, they're supposed to protect the people. <laughs> yeah, people with power. They're the reason you're safe and free. Actually, around cops, you're neither of those things. Perhaps the most accurate metaphor I've ever heard for police is they're a kind of abusive partner you can't escape. They tell you what to do, they punish you for doing it wrong, using whatever kind of violence they deem necessary to bring you into line with the way they want to exercise their authority. You're not allowed to leave or opt out, and they're always telling you how lucky you are to have them. Hmm. My only quibble with this metaphor is an abusive partner is a good metaphor for the entire state system. The police are just its enforcers. Maybe all this searching for metaphors is just a sophisticated way of lying. The bad apple, sheepdog, and blue line metaphors seem just to be ways of covering up the truth and simplifying everyone's thinking. They're all part of the propaganda. If you think a metaphor someone uses is inaccurate, ask them what they mean and where they heard it. It might be a good chance to undermine the metaphor and shake things up. Before we finish, one more analogy. This one for people who think the answer is to reform the police or any part of the system. The system's a bit like a rubber band. You can try to reform it by stretching it one way, or stretching it the other, but it always retains its basic shape. Until, that is, you stretch it so far that it breaks.